Hi Space Cats, I'm Dr Maggie Liu and welcome back to my channel. Last week a science discovery was announced that phosphine was found on Venus. But what exactly is phosphine? And why has it got everyone so excited? This week I'll be discussing just that, so let's start. Phosphine is a colourless gas made up of hydrogen and phosphorus. Apparently, it can smell pretty foul, with analogies made to garlic or even rotten fish. But phosphine in its most pure form is actually odourless. For this reason, it's commonly found in fumigating rats, but equally it can also be used in electronics industry to create semiconductors. In nature, phosphine is pretty rare unless it's created industrially. Only a few other ways are known to produce phosphine. It can be formed during lightning strikes, volcanic eruptions, or it can be found in the breakdown of organic matter, e.g. sewage sludge produced by anaerobic microorganisms that don't breathe oxygen. But the small amounts of phosphine on Earth is probably a good thing. Even trace amounts of the gas can cause headaches, dizziness, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, and more. More serious exposure is lethal, and at ambient temperature, the gas is explosive. Astronomers have detected phosphine gas, PH3, in Venus's atmosphere, where it shouldn't be there. It should be oxidized, like everything else is there. Carbon is found in the form of carbon dioxide, sulfur in the form of sulfuric acid, and phosphorus should be in the form of phosphoric acid. But here we see approximately 20 parts per billion worth of phosphine gas, which is actually quite a lot. It's so much that whilst lightning does occur on Venus, the frequency is much too small to create the detected amount of phosphine seen. Similarly, there is not enough volcanic activity on Venus to pump that phosphine into the atmosphere. The only other known feasible explanation is that phosphine is created by anaerobic microorganisms in Venus's upper atmosphere. This is well supported by the fact that they're seeing the phosphine mostly in the warm equator regions and not in the poles. So does this mean we have found evidence of life on Venus? Well, not quite. The presence of phosphine is not a robust indicator of life. It could be an anomaly or even some unexplained chemistry that we have yet to come across. You have to remember that Venus is an extremely hostile environment. The clouds rain sulfuric acid and block out over 75% of the sun's light. In fact, the clouds are so thick that they cause a runaway greenhouse effect, where the average surface temperature is around 400 degrees Celsius. The pressure is also extremely high, 100 times higher than that of Earth, making water-based life, like you and me, almost impossible to survive. The only probes that have successfully landed on Venus are from the Russian space agency Roscosmos. So it's no wonder that the Russians have already claimed the planet as their own. But even then, the longest a probe has ever survived is less than two hours on the surface before it was destroyed by the heat and the pressure. Also, Venus is not the only place in the solar system that houses phosphine. Phosphine has also been observed on Jupiter and on Saturn, similarly with a lack of abundance at the poles. So more likely there is some unknown process that's creating the phosphine that we don't yet know about. But let's say the microbes really are the true culprits. There's nothing to say that they would be alien life. For all we know, they could be contaminants brought over from the Russian probes that we sent all those years ago. Either way, more observations are required to really confirm the results are real, and then the next steps would be try to get our hands on some of that atmospheric sample. I'll put the link to the discovery paper down below in case you're interested in finding out more. Thank you so much for watching this week's video, and if you enjoyed it, please don't forget to leave me a like, share, and subscribe.